Hello and welcome to another Tune for Media lesson. I hope you enjoyed the music you just heard. And today's lesson is all about the synthesizing technique that you just heard uh, with my drum pads. And it's the amazing and surprisingly not very familiar uh, car plus strong string synthesis technique. So it's a really, really cool synthesizing technique that I want to show you. And uh, we're going to roughly make the same patch uh, that you just heard with my drum pads. But first, let me explain a little bit what car plus strong string synthesis is. Uh, so, first of all, let me show you a little patch. Okay, so uh, back in the 80s, there was this guy, Alexander Strong, who invented an algorithm that later on another guy named Kevin Karplus um, implemented for the first time with great success. And um, thus the name Karplus Strong, String Synthesis, uh, the idea is to take a very short burst of uh, sound wave, mostly noise because noise has a lot of uh, a very, very wide uh, frequency range. Uh, but you can actually experiment with different types of uh, sound waves and it will create different timbre. So you take this very fast uh, burst of sound and you feed it into a delay um, and you loop the delay with um, a feedback. Uh, in this case, it's 90% uh, feedback. Uh, so it's actually uh, decays. Uh, the, de the, the feedback makes it, of course, decay in some amount of time. And the delay is so short and the loop is so fast that you starting to hear um, the actual hertz the, from the delay. So it's kind of create this um, uh, kind of plucked string instrument sound, but the sound is so complex that I think uh, if you put different envelopes or different filters or different sound sources, uh, you will create maybe bowed instruments or even aerophonic instruments, hi-hats, uh, you name it. I think you can do a lot with this technique. So let me show you um, how it sounds. So right now I have this noise uh, with uh, going from full amplitude to nothing in just 10 milliseconds, really fast. Uh, and it's fed into this delay uh, that is right now with 100 milliseconds, which is very, very slow for a couple of strong sound to occur. Um, but we'll see how it will develop into a plucked string melodic sound. So let me just play this sound. <laughs> okay, if I'll take this, uh, this is not melodic at all. You just hear the noise, uh, very short burst of noise, and it just delayed in 100 milliseconds and looped uh, with 90% feedback, so it just uh, decays in some amount of time. But listen what happened if I'm starting to um, shorten the time of the delay. Still nothing. Okay, starting to hear some melodic notes. There we go. So also what's cool about it, it's this is noise, so it's random. So every time you hit this um, note, this envelope, you will get a little bit of a different note. And the faster the delay, the higher the pitch. And if you notice that the faster I go, um, the shorter the sustain because the loop is getting faster and faster. That's pretty cool. Okay, so um, let's just make music with this. So let's turn it into something a little more musical. I'm going to bring note in and I have my drum pad next to me. So let's see if I'm getting any notes. 
and I do. So what if I want to be a little more melodic and to have more control? Uh, this is where it gets really, really cool. Um, instead of uh, instead of sending different times like that with a floating box or you know any other things, I can change uh, the amount of time with my pitch. And so if you take the hertz and you divide it by a thousand, you'll get the milliseconds to this um, delay line. And it will basically turn this delay into the, the, the amount of time required to create the note from the, uh, from the actual pitch. So uh, MIDI to frequency will take my MIDI notes and then I can uh, divide it by a thousand because we're trying to uh, take the milliseconds out of it. And let's fit it here. So now, um, if I'm playing a note, I get the actual um, time required for this note to happen. Um, so let's do something like that. What I'm going to do now is trigger a bang and the number of milliseconds. So if I'm playing this note, I'm getting a very melodic uh, sound. So K slider will be even uh, more convincing. Awesome. Um, what I did in my patch, by the way, is I took strip note, which doesn't take a uh, zero velocity or note off messages. Uh, I fed it like that. And um, I, first of all, create some kind of a, uh, some kind of a volume control made by the velocity. So, uh, this is 0 to 127 uh, divided by 27 will get you to uh, zero between will get you to a range between 0 and 1 uh, so it's great because 1 is unity gain and 0 is silence so now i have velocity sensitive um, sound and if you change the feedback you'll get um, more sustain and you can play with different types of delays uh, to get maybe different sounds uh, for example um, I like to use gen uh, if you're not familiar with gen gen is some kind of a different world within max uh, that is processing audio in a different rate, different type of uh, uh, language. Uh, and um, so this is not actually Max. Uh, it just looks like Max. Uh, and it's so much faster and smoother um, because it's processing audio in single samples while Max is actually processing audio in vectors. So you can actually uh, create even faster delays. So I can put delay with feedback on and if I let's say uh, oops do something like that and fit it back like that and output so you see the code I can take this um, entire thing and instead of using this and I can use this gen and it might sound different, might not, <laughs> it depends, uh, but let's see, let's see what we have. Oh, right, so gen is processing in samples, not in milliseconds, uh, so all I have to do is uh, milliseconds to samples in order to make it work. Okay, now I should have so to me, it sounds a lot smoother. So what else? Uh, in my patch, I also uh, created a random object and to generate 
five different notes and then I did um, I triggered a bang and uh, then the pitch like that uh, put the random and do select whoops select zero one two three four these are the numbers that are coming out from random uh, so this is to create this type of a randomness, uh, random pentatonic scale. Uh, and it's really just fun because when you play, you don't know exactly what note you're going to end up. You just know that it's going to be inside the pentatonic scale. So trigger zero um, will not change anything. And trigger two. And this is the pentatonic scale, by the way, the major pentatonic scale. Uh, and seven, that's the fifth, and then nine. There you go. So you can do something like that, and plus zero. So every time you hit the note, you'll get a different pitch uh, based on the random. So let's see if it works. Very, very cool. Okay, let's go back to Jen. Um, I like the use of this uh, T60 thing, and let me explain what it is. Uh, it's calculating the time it takes for the frequency to decrease in 60 decibels based on the feedback. So if I'll take the uh, frequencies uh, and maybe... Uh, let's say, uh, multiplied by 0 0.9, or you know what, let's multiply it with some, something positive, like 2. Or in, in Jan, you don't, have to put, you don't have to put dots for floats. Everything is floating 64. Uh, and put it like that, and instead of doing that, I'm just going to put this. I'm going to have different, um, different sustain. And whoops, you have to do it from the samples. And let's even put it like a five. Okay, so now I'm gonna have more um I'm going to have more sustain. And we can go like uh fifteen. A lot of sustain. Or no, let's change it to like uh, to five. Okay, so what's next? So next thing we can do is to maybe pass it through a filter and do something interesting about this filter that makes it, um, to me, a little more realistic. Uh, so what we can do is let's start with like 3,000 we can create a line object and some kind of a filter envelope let's say from um, dollar one to zero or maybe to 0 0.2 which will not end up muting the sound altogether in like uh, maybe five or even seven milliseconds and you take this number and you multiply it by uh, the amount of the maximum uh, cutoff frequency that you like, like maybe uh, 5,000, start with something like that. And the reason I put a uh, dollar sign is because I want to use uh, the amount of velocity to also control the uh, the brightness of the attack. So how much attack do I have uh, the stronger I hit, the more attack I'll get. Very cool. And I can go further to like uh, maybe 7,000 and even 10 milliseconds here. Uh, last thing that I would like to do um, is... Uh, you know what, two things that I would like to show you is, first of all, if I change it to, uh, let's say, pink noise, I'm going to get more of a nylon 
kind of sound. Cool. And you know, let's, let's increase the attack with um, maybe like a multiply the amount with like seven or something like that. It will be more uh, bigger um, drop in my filter. Very cool. And the higher you go here, you'll get more uh, of a pointy attack. Which makes it, uh, to me, uh, more realistic. It's kind of sound like a, more of a, like a, a string instrument. Uh, the last thing that I um, am doing is uh, is very optional. It depends what you're looking for. Is maybe to encase all of my synthesizer here, um, maybe up to here, um, and put this poly here with sig or signal this poly is for polyphonic um, uh, synthesizers it's uh, a way for me to tell uh, uh, if you're familiar with poly tilde poly tilde is when uh, you take a patch another patch and you feed it through poly tilde like uh, you 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 uh, you put the name of the patch, for example, uh, Penta. Uh, so in this case, there's actually a patch like that. This is the patch. Uh, and, or I think Penta Poly, I call it. Uh, and let's say four voices. And a really powerful thing, the poly object. Uh, so there you go. And this is my actual patch. And... Um, it allows you to create polyphonic instruments. And so this poly is to determine when a voice of one of the, the four voices that I put here uh, is actually muted and ready to be occupied. Uh, so you can take, let's, uh, let's do this. Um, here we go. So I need, I actually need uh, something like that. Um, pack uh, to create a polyphonic instrument you need to send it a message of a MIDI note and then dollar sign 1 and dollar sign 2 because you, you send uh, note and velocity and let's feed it like that see if I have some kind of a sound Awesome. Um, it creates some kind of cool overlaps and it sounds more realistic, like some kind of a string instrument. Um, and that's it. I think that's it. So I hope you enjoy this lesson and I hope you find this Carpla Strong um, interesting as I do. I think it's a really cool, interesting uh, concept for uh, synthesizing. And uh, if you like this video, please subscribe for more. And see you next time. Stay tuned.